name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 We have to change. Remember, I, Pastor, I, I started by saying that we have to change our mindset. That's right. If we're if we're thinking in the flesh, then we're gonna want worldly things. Mm. Those those type of questions, I expect that. So rather than me answer that question, I have to now pull back. And try to redirect them to focus on God, not man. Because if I stay there, then we're going to be talking about all worldly things. That's After right. we address your friends, you're going to be telling me why is this? Because we're still on worldly things. Your mindset haven't changed. So therefore, you're not even prepared for marriage at all. That's right. Because your, your relationship with God has to be your foundation. You must be connected to God. For he's the third court of your marriage. He's the one supporting you, right? Everything you need. He's not a man. Remember, I told some people they get into marriage thinking that marriage will fill the void, thinking that marriage uh, will um, will fill that happiness, thinking that marriage will solve all their problems. If you're getting married just to compete with the Jones, as soon as you jump in, you will jump out. Mm. Some of you want to have children because they want to marry to have children. They want to marry so they can start having their children. So if you finish the having the children, children you will not be happy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but even children, children require work to that. Mm. You have to prepare yourself for that too. Mm. A growing family, you have to prepare yourself. If you believe in God for uh, um, um, children, then she must be patient. He must be patient. I can't assume it's just women. Some men are really believing God for their spouse too, and they want to choose correctly because there are a lot of glitters, but they're looking for good. Mm. You know? Mm. So. Um, just continue to stay in prayer and trust God. God is not, he's not capable of failing. Mm. He's not man. So if I trust God, then I win anyways. Okay. Because his timing for me is always the best. The question is, am I willing to yield to God? Am I willing to yield to his will? Am I willing to trust him concerning my life? That's the choice we all have to make. If you're not willing to trust God, then you're going to be frustrated because you want things your way rather than surrendering to Him. Mm. Wow. Please, let's continue if you have more. So I it just really that I just want to encourage people, you know, not to focus on so much of the pressures mm. that's coming. I understand they're family members. You love them. And every time you go there for Thanksgiving, you have to answer those same questions. Ah, uh, <laughs> you haven't found a husband. Well, well, the Bible is clear. My husband is supposed to find me. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm not supposed to find the husband. He will find me. But I'll continue to fulfill my purpose, what God wants me to do in this season. If he wants me to sing, I'll sing. If he wants me to serve, I'll serve. And I believe as I position myself, you know, God is preparing me. And my husband will find me. So what I would what I would encourage women who are faced with the pressure from family members, okay, is the spirit will be praying for me. I believe he's coming. Keep me in prayer. Mm. I will silence it. That's it. You know? Yeah, yeah, keep me in prayer. That's it. When keep me we, in prayer. The when, Lord will do it. When does one discover that this loneliness and this singleness is not just the will of God, <laughs> but it's satanic? There's something behind the scene that if I don't aggressively deal with it, I may perpetually be single forever. At what point do... Because if you say, be patient and be content, and the devil too, the powers already don't want you to get married. And then at what time do you separate between the will of God that is working towards your highest welfare? And at what point do you know that this kind of delay in my marriage, this kind of delay is satanic, is demonic. I need to break out of it. Otherwise, the powers will keep me single forever. Uh, how do they descend between the will of God and satanic influence that is keeping them single? Because some, some people, if they... In fact, the devil will be very happy if they can add contentment with it because they haven't been spiritually they do the demons and witches and household wickedness is you you will never marry and now to you said uh, you are saying you are content so be single forever at what point do you know that this is satanic and i have to do warfare and break myself out of it well every case is different mm. with some people it is that case and some people it's just not god's time for them okay. um it could be demonic forces that's hindering them mm. we talked about examples before it could be a struggle from your family line mm-hmm. it could be 
it, it could be, but, in, but as you're preparing yourself, remember the prepare the place where you're preparing yourself. That means you're staying in prayer. Okay. You're staying in word. You're staying in His presence. As you pray, God reveals secret things concerning your life. Mm. If you're in the presence of, when Adam and Eve were in the presence of, of God, they had regular communion with Him, regular communication with Him. When you're in a place of prayer, you know people see prayer. Prayer as a, because prayer is conversation with God. Conversation is a two-way street. When you're staying in a place of prayer in his presence and you're communicating, communicating to God, guess what? He's communicating back to you. As you're sharing your heart, God is speaking back to you, whether he'll speak through a dream or a vision or a still small voice, but he will speak. And if it's the area of deliverance, he will confirm it. He will confirm it. Well, this is because God reveals to redeem. So if it, if it's a particular young woman and her issue is her foundation, God will reveal that okay. in her place of preparation. Okay. But if she's in the world and if she's not in the presence of God, she doesn't have a relationship with God, with God, all you can do is pray that God will reveal to her. But when she's there, God will speak. Okay. It's just up to us if we listen. Um, is there some attitudes you know you go into marriage and you realize you are a woman and your husband <laughs> being a man they are ve- you are you are you are different uh, and but you didn't know this until you got in and you realized that oh okay men do things this way and so mm. another woman who is now coming in what advice would you say that hey you know what when it comes to communication this I, I, i'm advising you when it comes to food I'm advising you. When it comes to sex, I'm advising you. When it comes to money, I'm advising you. Is there some little advice within marriages you can give to women to make them a little bit wiser so that they will be able to put their home in order? Especially some some wives, but they have too many friends and my friend and my friend and my friend they are still behaving as though when they were single some people but they want, weren't prepared yeah prepared. They, they'll get married and still every day they're on the phone and that's so friend, tight and, that too, friend, yeah. and talking yeah. and talking and talking ah a married woman <laughs> so what what are some of the little things that you also just a little bit details information of or the dynamics of a man and, 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 and in treating men and how how can you pacify an, an angry man even in, in in marriage and you say hey you no know, no woman when your husband is angry this is how you do it now, when it comes to sex this is what you have to do um cooking is it important that i learn how to cook we are in a world whereby a man should be able to cook a woman is it of necessity that me is a young woman getting married should should i learn to cook is that is that my responsibility mm-hmm. because men work i also work uh, so why should i be thinking of learning how to cook uh, is it a plus or is it necessary at all and also when children come in what are the dynamics with i'm not talking about a, a, a little bit general experience in marriage to help some singles that sometimes they don't even think about it until they get in and say, wow, mm-hmm. I didn't know men are like this. What were some surprise of men? Oh, I didn't know men viewed things this way. Well, first I'll say all those questions are great. And that is also one of the reasons why we stress premarital counseling. counseling. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not only just to um, talk about your role and prepare you for marriage is also an opportunity to learn more about yourself. Mm. Because quite frankly, during that period of courtship, when you, God has showed you this is your wife, this is your husband, and you're preparing for marriage, that's the time for you to really get to know each other. And I'm not talking about the physical, but just really what are your beliefs? You know, what are, you know, your, your core values? Mm-hmm. You know, there are some people that are up front. Okay. Listen, I don't, uh, you know, women, there's some women in this generation, they, and that's okay. It's, it's okay if that's you. Um, they don't see the need to cook. Mm-hmm. Why should I have to cook? He's a, he's a human. And there's some guys that are okay with it. Okay. But as long as you guys have that dialogue, understanding, understanding. and you know she can't cook, and she has no desire to want to cook, and you're okay with cooking, hey, 
to it's each fine. their own, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, it's not something I would advise. Like, uh, if I'm training a young woman or counseling her, you know, I would, I would obviously, you know, encourage her to fulfill her goals. What are the gifts and talents that God has put in you? Um, make sure you develop skills with that because talent is what gives you what God gives you, and uh, skill is what you do with that talent. And God has given each and every one of us, regardless of the sex, whether you're male or female, he has given us talent. And he expects us to be fruitful with that talent. So even as a woman, if you're called to stay home or be a homemaker, still tap into that talent. Maybe your talent is to run your home. Maybe your talent is to encourage other young women. Whatever that talent is, make it a skill. Okay. You know, so, um, but definitely I would encourage, you know, them to um, really communicate, communicate. Don't assume one person knows how you feel. Don't assume the other person knows how, what you're thinking. And then pick and choose your battle. Not every little thing needs to be World War II. Not everything needs to be addressed, you know? There are certain habits that will change in time. When you live with someone, you get to really know them. Mm. You know their strength, you know their weaknesses, and that's not the, for you to expose, but to cover them. And to have dialogue and conversation with things that are really bothering you. And you guys work towards that change. But it takes that understanding before you get married. Like, okay, I'm, I'm seeing that this is the kind of person he is, this is what his belief is. But even when you get married, you're still going to learn other aspects. They're still going to learn other things about themselves, and you address it. So long as God is your foundation, so as long as you guys stay in a place of prayer, you guys are, are praying together, you're worshiping together, and you're doing individual, God will always speak to you, and he will guide you concerning your home. The Bible says in Proverbs 15, verse 1, that a gentle answer turns away wrath. Be careful your words. Your words. Our words are powerful. Um, once they come out of your mouth, you can't take it back. So don't um, speak uh, recklessly um, because of how we feel. You know, take time to pause, pray, gather your thoughts, and then communicate when you when you really need to. Supposing what I would advise. a single lady or man finds a person who is very nice, very nice, mm-hmm. very gentle, and loving. However, they are not Christians. They are not a Christian. They, are, they don't believe in Jesus. They don't go to church. But physically, they are very nice. And the person is nice, gentle, and loves. You could see that this man loves this woman. But the only thing is, but he's not a Christian. And then you find the single saying, oh, I'll save him. Uh, he will become born again. When you know, uh, What advice do you, can they go for? <laughs> um, love alone is not enough to sustain any marriage. If we don't have the same cause and value, what are we standing on when trials, when um, storms of life come? Because they will come. And we have to stand, but what are we standing on? So if we're not in one accord with our belief, if we're not both standing on the word, we're setting ourselves up to fail because we're supposed to be one. So, and there's some, a lot of good people. Mm-hmm. I hate to say that I'm not going to make it to heaven because mm-hmm. Jesus says he's the way. So if you're not connected to Christ, regardless of how you are, how good you are, listen, there's no guarantee that this will work, mm. you know, because people change. That's true. And you, even that person will change. One thing that is a guarantee is change. Human beings change. You change physically. You change mentally. You change spiritually. No one person stays the same forever because we grow with time. And every experience, anything that we encounter, whether it's reading, whether it's our environment, will change us in some way or another. So if we're not growing in love, if we're not standing on the core principle that will ensure you know, that when storms of life come that we will stand, then what are you standing on? You're just taking a chance because you don't know how the storms of life will change that person. There are a lot of people that were great people. And you mentioned this when you talked about talk when you talked about toxic relationship before we started talking about they were great, shivery, wonderful, God fearing, but then something changed. Mm. 
And even with deliverance, Pastor K, you know this, there, there are things called time-sensitive de- demons, especially when you're dealing with yeah. um, foundational issues. That's true. Uh, demons that have been programmed to people's life, or genera- uh, children's life from a point in time. Okay, when this person gets married. Oh, when this one graduation, crash, fall, scatter. So you don't know what's happening. And if this person can't go through deliverance because they're not connected to Christ and they don't believe such things, how would they be able to fight? So what you are saying is that if this single lady came with this gentleman who is so loving mm-hmm. and kissing her and say, I will love you, I will, uh, uh, and, and, and she's telling you, mommy, she, he's so nice, he's supportive, he's doing everything. Are you going to advise her that please break the relationship? It's not going I can't anywhere. tell her that. Mm-mm. But that's I what you're to, telling us. No, no, no. no but I, <laughs> the man is not a Christian. He is not a Christian. Your daughter mm-hmm. brought to you an unbeliever and says, Mommy, this yeah. is my somebody I found. He's nice. He's mm-hmm. I, we went to high school together, we went to college together. We he's so good to me. He loves me. But mom, he doesn't mm-hmm. believe in, in, in our Jesus. Will you allow your daughter to marry that boy? This is the thing. And I I want to be clear on that. When it comes to marriage, and I I think I mentioned this on Monday, you have to be very careful. Because like I, I like I say, marriage is a ministry, and God has a vision for every ministry. He has a purpose for every um, marriage. You could have two believers.